together i wanted to ensure that i have the humbucking coil correctly that is out of phase with the voice coil you can see the pop-up in the right top corner of the screen and if you're not seeing that just check the video description there's a link uh, for doing so i'm just using my uh, signal generator and instead of my signal tracer i'm just using my uh, multimeter and I'm reading the uh, voltage across the uh, primary the total primary of the output transformer and again have the uh, signal generator hooked up to the field coil uh, connection points I'm going to reverse the two leads you see here with the jumper the yellow black that's just the voice coil in series with the uh, humbucking coil up here and I want to see the least amount of AC voltage. Let me switch this real quick. And you can see that jumped uh, way up. So my original configuration is correct which would allow the uh, humbucking coil to help mitigate some of the uh, hum picked up from the uh, field coil. Let me get this tied in now. Since I know the correct orientation, again, the uh, polarity being out of phase between the humbucking coil, which resides here, and the voice coil. I have the configuration of the humbucking coil uh, correct. And now I just want to look at the output transformer again being a center tap because this is a push-pull configuration receiver. I want to look and see which winding is the inner winding and the outer winding. The outer winding will read higher DC resistance just due to the circumference of the uh, winding itself. So again, I've got the uh, center tap on the uh, black lead. And let me just rotate around, see what we have. So right at 235. Switching the leads, uh, 208. So my most inner winding would be this lead. My lead wire color code is uh, somewhat limited due to what I have on hand. So my outer, I'll make green. The center tap will be red. And the most inner winding will be white. For the fill coil, when I connect it, my start, which would be the most inner winding, will be black. And the final outside winding will be yellow. Murphy's Law, I suppose. Um, you can see me doing the lead dress for the primary side. Center tap red. And you saw where I just checked DC resistance. Uh, from center tap back to each side to uh, confirm inner winding versus um, outer winding. And now I have an open primary. Maybe a new transformer would make uh, most sense. This thing was uh, pretty rusty. There may be some uh, more damage in here. So this thing would have probably failed um, soon as B plus voltage would have been applied across the uh, primary. But um, a bummer, because you can see I've got the uh, secondary tied in. Well, Murphy's Law came into uh, play. I've got the output transformer. I had it actually connected to the loudspeaker, as you can see. And one side of the primary open. This is the uh, good side. Center tap back. And you can see my voltage. Switch leads. And I just had checked DC resistance. 
and uh, everything was looking good. So uh, glad it failed now. I'm going to pop this thing apart, just doing the math, getting the uh, turns ratio for half of the winding. It's uh, right at uh, 35 turns to one. Let me open this up. It appears the secondary is on the uh, most outer winding. We'll count the uh, number of turns. I'll look at uh, rewinding the uh, transformer and or just uh, purchasing a new transformer. And there we have the uh, core of the uh, transformer. Let me clean up my mess and uh, just see if I can unravel the secondary winding. Just count the number of turns and go from there. So unless I miscounted about 47 turns on the secondary winding. So doing the math, knowing we measured the turns ratio first for that uh, one half of the primary. 47 turns on the secondary times the uh, turns ratio of uh, 34.57 gives us roughly 1600 and say 25 turns for one half of the uh, primary or a total of around uh, 3,250 turns. Just for the fun of it, let me see if I can open this up and determine the uh, wire gauge. You might be able to see that. There's the uh, magnet wire that was used. Maybe a 40 AWG or so. So you can see the condition of the push-pull output transformer. This thing's worthy of a new transformer. I'll never be able to fit the wire back on here, the proper size wire. This is undersized for the amperage. And we'll get that in place. Something that will handle about uh, 10 watts. There you can see the wire gauge. Probably a 36 or 38 AWG. And I was able to uh, find the conductor. And you can see we're around 30 meg or so. So the failures probably back toward the core of the uh, transformer. It's always fun to extrapolate some of the data. Again, just looking at the size of the uh, winding bobbin, taking the uh, middle of the wiring area uh, times four, and uh, comes out to a little over a thousand feet of wire. And just doing the math for the DCR, Looks like 36 AWG was probably the closest match for the wire that was used. Just finished placing epoxy on the outside of the voice coil back to the cone and then sealed around the surround where it meets the gasket. What's commonly used, again, another Hammond 125D push-pull output transformer. It will handle the 10 watts for this particular receiver 
And again, the second area itself is tapped. And you can see the tapping location I chose, looking at the impedance uh, just above uh, 10,000 ohms. That would be a great match again for the 6F6 push-pull tube configuration. So the only thing left is the uh, lead wire dress, just cleaning all of that up. You can see my tie points there. I also reproduced the nomenclature there for the model number, make, and a new decal for the bell. And for future reference, for anyone needing this, the uh, pinouts and tie points for that seven prong plug. Sounds good, Don. I am thrilled.